We're going to get to the future of Luis Diaz. Now, Liverpool seem to be in pole position to sign the Porto winger. Emma, this one moving quickly, as are Liverpool. Yeah, 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 they are. Um, and outside looking in, it's, it feels like a big turnaround because, of course, all week we were talking about uh, Luis Diaz potentially going to Tottenham and headed to North London. And then early this morning, we were reporting that actually Liverpool now considering a move for him. So outside looking in, it felt like things uh, are sort of moving quickly and look they've accelerated since then as well because in terms of the deal would be a 45 million euro deal that's around 37 million pounds for the player plus a maximum of 15 million euros in terms of bonuses as well that of course depending on his success if he were to come to Liverpool um, and look it seems like it's kind of come out of the blue but in terms of the background Diaz was a target for Jurgen Klopp in the summer it's just a case of Liverpool now accelerating this interest because the likes of Tottenham were interested in signing him and obviously, obviously he might not be available in the summer if that did come around. So um, also worth saying as well, this is a better deal that Liverpool would be getting because 60 million euros was the original asking price from Porto. Um, Liverpool fans kind of getting in touch excited. Tottenham fans not so much, but for Liverpool fans it's not something that we expect to be announced today. This is quite a complex deal. It's not sort of close at the moment, probably around 72 hours is the kind of time scale we're looking at. Liverpool very much in pole position, but there is lots to be done before that. Um, and the whole thing that's making this a lot more complex as well is that he is part of his national side at the moment, out with Colombia, um, in Argentina. So Liverpool sending a team over to Argentina to get this deal done maybe he even has a medical out in Argentina as well, out in South America. Of course, Argentina is where Colombia play next on Tuesday. Um, so look, things seem to be moving swiftly yeah. and it seems like it's come out of the blue, but like I said, one that Liverpool had an eye on for the summer, but having to do something a little bit sooner now. Yeah, we'll get into it in a little bit more detail, but earlier on I spoke to Portuguese football expert Felipe Diaz, who expects this deal to go through and says Liverpool will be getting the best player in Portugal. At the start of the window, we were talking about those links with Liverpool, then Spurs, yeah. now Liverpool again. What are you hearing now? Uh, what, what, what we're hearing so far, th this was big news last night, uh, not so long ago, a, couple of, a few hours ago, that um, he uh, is bound for, for Liverpool, that Liverpool are on the brink of signing him. Uh, Porto are playing it safe. They're not saying much uh, about this um, because it's their star player, it's their key player, they're, they're top of the league. They, they didn't want to lose him uh, just now. But the thing is that Liverpool uh, has an offer uh, for 45, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of euros, sorry, 45 million euros plus with 15 with the add-ons if certain goals are achieved. And this is something that Porto cannot say no to. This, this is an offer they just can't refuse. So it, the deal might go through uh, within the next couple of days or maybe within the next hours, we still don't know. But uh, most of the newspapers here, the news here is that the deal is, is going through. So uh, it, it, it appears, it does appear seriously that Luis Diaz, the best player in the Portuguese league, mind you, is going to be signed by Liverpool. Yeah, and I mean, you obviously think very highly of him the way that you're describing oh, yeah. him as being oh, yeah. a nice player. Could you see him fitting in well at Liverpool? Oh, for sure, for sure. I think uh, this is the kind of player that Klopp likes. You know, uh, technically, he's very, very gifted. He, you know, he's, I think he's bound for, for greater things than, than the Portuguese League. No doubt about that. He's the best Colombian player uh, at the moment, the best player in the Portuguese League at the moment. He can do anything uh, up front. Uh, he's not a centre forward, but, you know, he, he can do almost anything. This guy really has something special about him. And I, there's no doubt in my mind that if things go normally, he will fit in perfectly at Liverpool. No doubt about that, yeah. Yes, yeah, so Felipe saying he has absolutely no doubt he'd fit in well at Liverpool, says he's the best player in the Portuguese league, he's something special, you know, clearly thinks very highly of him. Um, Flex, he is someone that Klopp has had on his radar. From your perspective, do you see him fitting in with this Liverpool side? Yes, I do. Um, from a Liverpool perspective, really, really smart business. You look at the types of fees that were brandished around Mo Salah, Mane, and Diogo Jota all around this kind of ballpark. And it's a typical Klopp signing, but in terms of the player and how he's going to fit in, you're getting someone who is an aggressive in the press. 
He's got bags of energy. He's lethal on his right foot, coming cutting in off that left-hand side. Very dynamic, does his defensive duties well. He's a really exciting player. Yes, it may take time to adapt to the league. You know, sometimes you can't, there can't always be a Bruno Fernandes coming from um, Portugal and, and hitting the ground running straight away. But he's a very, very exciting player. And he, he gets goals as well. We can see here in 16 goals in 28 games with six assists. So he can do his job offensively for the team as well. And definitely the sort of player that can add to that dynamic kind of way that Liverpool want to play. And you look at the likes of Mane, some Liverpool fans have said, you know, we need to freshen it up. I remember Jamie Carragher saying every few years uh, that you need to kind of move on with that front three. And they haven't managed to do that at Liverpool and still kept them firing. So Jota came in at the right time and freshened it up and looks like um, Diaz can come in and do that too. You say about him getting goals. Some of his goals in the Copa America last year were sensational, Unreal. by the way. Like Puskas award nomination for some, some yeah. of his goals. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because you say it's quite a Liverpool signing, but they, he's a player on an upward trajectory, isn't yeah. he? So they're picking a player up like they do who are yet to kind of get to their best years. And still not having to, to, to pay astronomical um, you know, transfer fee for him. So I think it will be great. It will potentially be great business if he hits the ground running. And under Jurgen Klopp as well, who's got this knack and this understanding of how to improve players and elevate them to the next level in a, in a strict pressing system, playing expansive football, getting that getting at teams that it, it could be a big problem it's, a, it's actually jamie carragher's birthday today and he's pleading isn't he please sign him today please <laughs> It'll be a perfect present we've for seen, him now we've seen it we've yeah. seen it yeah. Yeah. Pleading. <laughs> you touched on it there about um liverpool kind of being a bit ruthless they've seen this opportunity they're acting now kind of accelerating plans because he was a target we understood for the summer um, our very own anton tolui tweeted just a short time ago he was speaking really highly of the player on the transfer shows on wednesday and he says being aggressive to get him earlier than planned is a smart move. And Flex, you did already kind of say that. You agree with that. Absolutely. It's smart from it, it, it shows that they're not just going to sit there and, uh, and, and rest on their laurels. They're, they're being proactive, or should I say really reactive in terms of looking at Spurs and saying, right, OK, we're not going to get um, him if we wait. Let's go now. Let's push forward now. Um, so they've clearly scouted him and know exactly what they want from him. Um, and know exactly about him and they can't afford to let him go to Spurs. If you look at where Liverpool are now, they know they're in a much better position than Spurs, um, not just in the league table, but in terms of their development, who they've already got at the club are much more appealing. So they've made, it seems like they've put the plan in place to go and get the player. And like I said, for the rest of the Premier League, who Liverpool keep playing well and doing well, well, it's another player to add to their ranks. Yeah, so it is good news for Liverpool fans. Not so good for Tottenham, as you already said, Emma. Uh, Michael, how disappointing will this news have been to Spurs fans? Yeah, of, of course it's disappointing. You know, he's, he's a very exciting player, but Antonio Conte has made it very clear, you know, when he speaks pre-match and in his press conferences that... You know, he, he needs better, he needs a stronger squad. In, in fact, this is what he said a few weeks ago uh, in, in a press conference about the quality he's inherited. After uh, only, only two weeks, I said that uh, we need to improve the quality of this squad. And for sure, we need to improve the quality of this squad. And uh, uh, I was sure uh, after... Uh, uh, um, seven days, ten days, two weeks about this. And then I make the evaluation to understand who is the player that I can count and the players that I can count. But for sure, and uh, uh, this squad needs uh, to, to improve the quality, but uh, in an important way. And Michael, I mean, we hear from Conte there. When you look at what Liverpool are doing here in terms of trying to get this one over the line, does it? raise further questions over Tottenham's transfer policy and the way that they go about their business when you look at that ruthlessness from Liverpool? Just on this player in particular, on Diaz, Spurs were prepared to match the fee and match everything which Liverpool are going to pay. I need to, okay. I need to say this because I, know, I, yep. know, I know that's the case. Um, on this occasion, the player just simply wants to go to Liverpool and Liverpool's interest has been long term. It's not that they've just come in and said, oh, Spurs, we like the look of this player Spurs are getting. It's been known for a long time. So just on this occasion, Spurs would have matched everything that Liverpool are going to offer. But this player is going to join Liverpool. Disappointment, but Spurs will move on. But I look at it, you know, Tottenham 4, Liverpool 1, October 2017 at Wembley. So the clubs were there and now it's... Liverpool are there and Spurs are there. And Antonio Conte has been very honest about it. There's been obsession and chat about Spurs always liking to leave it late. But if Tottenham went in for Diaz on January the 1st, 
would Liverpool have gone in for him? Yes, they would. You're going by what we know. It's just not a good look when there's previous frustrations and it, it's hard to take for supporters. They've lost sort of two key targets in two days for, 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 for many reasons, but they've got a director of football in place and with Antonio Conte there now and no incomings yet. So, look, it's going to be a busy few days, I'm sure. But as we've just played out there, Antonio Conte has been very honest. Mm. He wants better players. I think he's done an excellent job so far with the players he's had at his disposal. They've only lost one league game. They're banging the top four race. What he needs now is a few in. But he has openly said as well, it will take more than one window. Uh, Gianluca Di Marzio, who knows Conte, our, our colleague Sky in Italy, he has said Spurs are going to go all out in the summer to completely revamp this squad. You cannot do it in one window. So we talk it's about... a January one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so when people say, oh, oh he's going to walk if he doesn't get this and that, he is fully aware that this squad needs a serious service because over the last few years... And it's not even about spending. It's just they've not spent it right. We're talking about... Tange and Dumbele, a record signing, about to go on loan. Mm. Giovanni Lo Celso, 40-odd million from La Liga, wasn't in the squad against Chelsea. Deli Alli, that's three kind of creative players who could be on their way out. So they need to sort it out. But, and, they're, and they're still in the top four race. Does, it, does this show, though, as well, with, with Antonio Conte? He was such a big manager in the game, so successful. And part of having him there was to be able to draw players in for them to say, actually, I will believe in that product. I will go and play for Antonio Conte. But is this part of it as well, Mike, in terms of actually it's more than that at Tottenham because of where they are um, and they're not in Europe. And, they, you know, they, yes, we, we can say about trophies and stuff like that. But in terms of their development as a club, it shows where they actually are, that it's not just easy enough just to put a, a manager of Antonio Conte's prowess there and say we're definitely going to be able to attract mm. the players. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I don't always think the, the Champions League is the be-all and end-all. You know, mm. Tottenham had a summer once where they're in the Champions League and didn't sign anyone. And they went on to the Champions League final. But you look back now and say, look, if they did get that extra one or two in, they could have won the Champions yeah. League. And, and people, is that the frustration? People look now and go yeah. and laugh. Well, they were in the final of it. Mm. And now they're not in Europe. So Antonio Conte has been absolutely bang on of where the club is now. Best training ground, one of the, one of the best stadiums in the world and they just need to get the playing staff right. It's obviously been a frustrating few weeks, but Spurs can feel good knowing that they've got this world-class manager, and it's just hopefully they can back him with some world-class signings. They've missed out on this player, but it's not as if they haven't done enough, because I know for the record they have. He just wants to go to Liverpool.